Happy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome back to this next episode of Hot News. Hope you're enjoying your life. Let's go ahead and talk about number one. We've got our charity live stream coming up this coming Friday. We're going to be raising funds for Singap Research Fund because it there's a possibility that some research could go towards curing my son as well as the four or 500 other people who have been diagnosed with Singap. So get checked out for that. Also, just a note, we're going to be giving away my $4,000 custom UFD Tech one-of-a-kind PC as a raffle prize for the charity live stream that we're going to be doing so you can peep your eyes for friday august 28th we're going to be starting at 9 a.m eastern and going until 9 a.m eastern on saturday it's 24 hours so get ready for that now also get ready for today's video sponsor which is synergy my friends you want to use synergy on multiple computers when you don't have a giant L-shaped desk like I do and need to keep things separate. But instead, you have a monitor here, you have a monitor there, they're on two different systems because one's your work computer, one's your play computer. Synergy allows that to happen because you can control multiple devices using one set of keyboard and mice, whether it be Windows, Linux, Mac, what have you. Okay, you use Synergy to synergize across those platforms. It's easy to set up. You can just use this mouse, and this keyboard to control everything. Synergy gets it done. They have their basic level software as well as the pro level software, which includes SSL encryption. So you can check them out at the link in the video description. Buy the software if you're managing multiple computers, it makes your life easier and it's made my life tremendously easier, especially when I don't have desk space. Speaking of, Synergy is actually sponsoring this upcoming charity stream. So keep your eyes tuned for that. Also, one last thing, check out our Twitch live streams. I'm gonna be currently live as this video is going out, twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple. Come chat with me about today's hot news. Come talk to me about what you see going on in the world. Let me know what's going on in your brain, friends. Let's talk about PlayStation 5 though, because there's a new patent that's come out that shows that it has a feature and some additional partner accessories that we weren't quite expecting. And I have a question of who actually needs this for the PS5, but it's a patent that shows that there's gonna be some sensors, potentially in the DualSense controller, that detects the user as they pick up the controller and allows you to just automatically switch to the profile of the gamer, which is cool. It's a novel technology. You know, I don't have to put in an input, but do you know how many button presses it took me to select my profile on my PS4? One. And guess what? If I wasn't the main one selected, it took me two. Just mouse over and then hit the X. So I'm not sure if this was relevantly useful to a whole lot of people. Obviously, this is a neat idea that there could be sensors either uh, they I would assume is biometric or it could be based on how you're actually picking it up. Uh, there's not much detail of how it's done and it's not yet known if this is going to be fully implemented into the PS5 at launch, but it's a neat little feature. But on top of that, there's some extra patent stuff in here, such as the fact that there's going to be a keyboard and mouse for PlayStation, which is obvious because the PS4 already has keyboard and mouse support, but then also a new PSVR as well as a new portable PlayStation, which either they're just going to integrate stuff with the Vita somehow, or this is confirmation of what I've wanted, which it probably isn't, which is a PS4 mobile, right? Because it only takes, you only need like 1.8 teraflops to get to the equivalent performance of a PS4. It is so easy to do that on mobile chips right now. You have no freaking idea. Get an embedded APU from AMD. You put that in, you got two teraflops of performance on a mobile thing, and then it's the PS4 mobile. It plays every PS4 game. That would be the best idea. I would buy one. Yes, it's probably not going to happen. Anyways, what do you think about this? What do you think about the DualSense sensing your profile, does that help you? Is it something that eases up your life burdens somehow? Let me know in the comments. I'm keen to hear from you there. Also, while we're talking about mobile stuff, Fall Guys is coming to mobile in China. Apparently, the entertainment company Billy Billy has secured the rights to make Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout on mobile. No confirmation of whether or not it's going to be coming out to mobile here in the US. And honestly, the perfect platform for Fall Guys doesn't have it, which is the Nintendo Switch, and there is apparently a new rumor coming out that there's going to be a new Switch model releasing in early 2021. This is according to the Economic Daily News saying that Nintendo might launch a new version of the Switch console early next year. However, based on a few other things that I scrounged around on the internet, this likely isn't a brand new Switch. This is akin to the Switch refresh that we got when the Switch Lite launched, which was a better battery and more efficient process and a slightly brighter screen on the regular Switch. So from what I'm 
gathering it likely will be that not a switch pro not something that's actually faster but some ergonomic updates potentially some updates to the joy cons but not a fundamentally new nintendo switch experience but you're going to get a fundamentally new experience on the stock market have you ever wanted rgb stocks because stocks only go up i'm not a financial advisor I actually don't take that as investment advice but corsair is now filing for an IPO, an initial public offering for them to be a publicly traded company. They're filing for a $100 million IPO, and this is coming after a long string of success marks for Corsair. They acquired Elgato in 2018, they started Custom Liquid Cooling in 2019, then they acquired Origin, the System Integrator, then I forgot about this, they acquired Scuff Gaming, and they've just been making hit after hit after hit with a lot of their different products, so it's interesting to see them actually go to a publicly traded company at the behest of shareholders rather than a privately organized one. What do you think about this? Is this something that you actually want to see more of in the tech industry with these companies going public and then have shareholders to answer to as opposed to their, I guess, their own internal sense of what they should be doing and their customers? Let me know down in the comments. Corsair going public and it's been made public that the 12 pin power connector from Nvidia is a real thing. We talked about this in yesterday's episode of Hot News and now we've got an even better picture of it. Thanks to the editor at Hardware Lux, he has his hands on it and you can see that the 12 pin while you need dual eight pins to actually power the accessory is a tiny boy. Those 12 pins fit into the space of an eight pin. This answers the question as to whether or not two six pins can make up an eight pin because you're not fitting two six pins into that space. So while the RTX 3090 is supposed to be a chunk of dunk triple slot GPU, it does look like the 12 pin power connector actually won't be that big of a deal. Besides the fact that you don't have one and you'll have to either get an adapter or buy an Nvidia branded power supply to in, in order to even use it, but that's besides the point. And it's besides the point that the Renoir APUs aren't available for retail because when they do hit retail, like in the Japanese retail, market the entire inventory in Akibara market gets sold out within hours it's gone which is also what I did when I saw the 4750G for sale at eBay. I picked that up, I believe, on August 10th, and I'm very excited to say that it actually is in the state of Florida. As of recording right now, it's sitting in Orlando, and it just needs to make the quick drive up to Gainesville. I'm hoping, I'm hoping by the time this video goes live, it may have been delivered. If not, probably tomorrow, which I'm very excited for. I'm gonna get a 4750G, finally, yeah so excited for that but that's not the only exciting bit of Ryzen news that's come out one Usmus has announced their new clock tuner for Ryzen Linus actually did a full video where they showed that this allows you to get better Ryzen performance by just tuning the preferred cores on your AMD CPU by making it better undervolting a little bit so even if you get same or better performance you more than likely are doing it less power consumption which is great However, I do have to ask the question, which I'm curious to hear your opinions on. Maybe go take a look at Linus's video after you're done watching Hot News and let me know. This kind of seems like really cool for enthusiasts, but isn't probably a kill all for beating Intel. Like obviously if you have a higher end Ryzen chip and you wanna get the most out of it, you're more than likely gonna go through all the steps to make this happen, but this isn't gonna be the regular consumer thing. It's not gonna be something that puts AMD over the top. This is just gonna be a neat little overclocking tool in the Ryzen overclockers tool belt. Let me know what you think about that. And some people have been thinking that AMD needs to be downgraded on its stock, that it can actually perform as well well as they were going to think because of the fact that their data center demand will likely be slow in 2020 as well as the fact that Intel has been confirmed to use TSMC for their upcoming GPUs. So a analyst has downgraded AMD from an outperform the market to a market perform designation simply because they are now going to have to further compete not only with Nvidia for TSMC space but also Intel. So that's that's a sad what's also sad is seeing some misinformation on your facebook feed that's not a good thing i don't know if you know that lies typically being ingested not not healthy for you and facebook as implementing another step to make this better because they are trying a virality circuit breaker to stop the spread of misinformation, which will allow their moderators to actually review the post before allowing it to spread virally and instead have it them having to do damage control. They can actually preempt any viral misinformation campaigns that might actually be going out on the internet. I know that I can already hear the dichotomy of people into the comments saying, oh, but they shouldn't be doing that. This should be free. They're not 
actual content publishers, so they shouldn't regulate this. And other people being like, yes, please stop my dear Aunt Sally, Sally, Sally from posting all of those garbage fake news articles that I'm seeing all over the place. Let me know what you think of this down below. Keep it civil. Counting on you guys. Keep this healthy. And keep your PC healthy because I don't think it's good enough to run Microsoft Flight Simulator, is it? No, it's not. Your PC sucks. Yeah, my RTX 2080 Super gets 48 FPS average at 1080p, very high settings. It is crazy hard to run. And then you, you, you think you're doing well at Microsoft Flight Simulator, go try to fly New York City, okay? My FPS is 30. 30 with the 2080 Super at 1080p. And this, according to some analysts at John Petty Research, are saying is going to infuse the PC market with $2.6 billion because they expect that people's computers will be so bad that they will have no choice but to upgrade. Is Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 the new crisis? Can that run MFS, huh? Can it? No, it can't. You only have a 2080. I pathetic. I have a 3090 times two. I don't, I don't, I don't have a 3090. Or you could be like the person at the top comment on this article, which is why would anyone build a PC for this? It's pointless. It's garbage optimized DX11 engine. It looks great, but your system doesn't matter because it's so freaking CPU limited. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. And Tesla wants you to know that you need to stop modifying your Teslas because there are performance physical hacks mods that are going out there that allow you to get extra horsepower and extra speed, which they are selling for the acceleration boost. And with the latest update for the Tesla Model 3s, they're making it so that you cannot use this Nginx mod. But apparently Nginx is also working on a workaround for the workaround that Tesla is working on. Complicated, but what's not complicated is you shouldn't leave your kids in the car when they're unattended and they have no ability to get out themselves. And Tesla wants to make sure that that does not happen in their cars because they're filing with the FCC to use their radar sensors to detect kids left in hot cars. And apparently with the way that they detect it, they have very few false positives to make sure that they know that is actually a human that's in the car and not just uh, a random object that's in a seat, which is great and would prevent potential child deaths. So I don't know if the FCC should pass this because I don't know if it's actually, you know, good for wavelength stuff, but it w anything that protects the kids, won't somebody please think of the children. Won't somebody please think of the children who won't get to play Fortnite on their iPhone 12 Pro Max at 120 hertz? No, they had to play Fortnite at 60 hertz. Now it's gone because there's new information that the iPhone 12 Pro and Pro Max will likely still have 120 hertz display even though they likely won't have the LTPO OLED technology, which is a little redundant. Anyways, the LTPO just gives you a better OLED screen. Apparently, maybe Apple might be sacrificing that in order to hit 120 hertz on the Pro and Pro Max, which is going to lead to buttery smooth asphalt skin. I don't know what kids play on, on iPhones. I'm not quite sure. And I'm not quite sure what good animes are because I'm just a Dragon Ball Z nerd, which is the most mainstream thing you can do. Anyways, Crunchyroll updated their subscriptions and now they have a higher tier subscription that allows you to download anime to watch it offline. And now they have a mega fan and ultimate fan streaming service tier, which costs 10 or $15 a month and allows for offline viewing. And speaking of offline viewing, you can view this off of not watching hot news, the new Lord of the Rings Gollum teaser trailer getting dropped with our first look at what Gollum is actually going to look like. And this gives me huge Oddworld vibes. I mean, he essentially looks like either Abe or Munch from Oddworld. I don't know. What do you think of it? Let me know what you think of the Lord of the Rings. And let me know what you think about CD Projekt Red, who has confirmed that Cyberpunk 2077, just like The Witcher 3, you won't have to pay for DLC. It will be free DLC. And I will remind you that DLC does not include expansion packs such as Hearts of Stone and Blood and Wine, which were offshoots and added ons to the game and not technically downloadable content into the original Witcher 3. So it's slightly different. Anyways. It's good. good. Good guy CDPR. And good guy me for giving you the news. Heck yeah. All right. Don't forget to come check me out over on Twitch right now. Twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple. If you're watching this video within like the first hour or two of it going live, I will be live on Twitch. Also, don't forget to check out today's video sponsor, which is Synergy. Control multiple devices with your one keyboard and mouse on one computer. Mac, Linux, Windows, doesn't matter. One is all you need, and then you can control more than one. Check out Synergy at the link in the video description. And check out something else on the internet. I don't know. I'm freaking done. I'm glad that you guys were here. But it's over. That's what we've had. It's gone. Stop trying to hold on to it. You know? Like, you just, you never moved on from who you were supposed to be. And you got stuck into who you are. Why, 
why don't you realize that fate isn't sealed? Okay? And you can stop this because that was awful. I'm sorry, guys. Bye.